Hello, my name is Ethan Ortiz. I'm with Here You Co LLC, and today I'll be presenting a, a tutorial on Pi-hole API. I've put together this presentation based on uh, different uh, conversations I've seen online, uh, different documentation, trying to decipher uh, the API and put it into one concise uh, Postman collection to make it easier to explain uh, and communicate uh, how to use the Pi-hole API. Uh, here's a list of some of the requests I'll be covering, actually all the requests that I'll be covering, and uh, I'll also add a uh, just a Py Python example. So let's get started. So uh, I'm using Postman. Please see the uh, second video I created on the introduction to Postman uh, so they understand uh, what the collections and environments are. Uh, I'll do some uh, minor explanations as I move, move through this, this particular collection. So uh, I'll start with a uh, get version, a very simple request to get the version of Pi-hole that's running. I'm referencing the uh, Postman uh, variable over here uh, for Pi-hole server, which in my case is an IP address ending in .53. And this is the URL um, with the, 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 the one difference to this call, which will give me the version number. Uh, again, this has no authentication requirement, so it's very simple, not, nothing to add in the headers. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hit send. And we end up with a uh, JSON response body that just says uh, version um, is 3. And that's it. Very simple request. Uh, we'll move on to the summary statistics info. Uh, we have a, a raw format one and a formatted one. Uh, very minor... Um, uh, change, but uh, let's see. Right here we have summary raw. Uh, again, no authentication. We'll hit send, and we get a bunch of values for you know number of ads blocked today, DNS queries today, and so on. Okay. And the difference between the raw and formatted is that the one is an integer and one is a string. As you see here, these are surrounded by a quotation marks. So uh, take your pick, whichever one you want to use um, there. Now, uh, what kind of backend is Pi-hole using? So we can ask by specifying a type. So let me go ahead and hit send. Again, not much to, to see here, just an HTTP get, uh, the Pi-hole server, admin, API, PHP, and then this one word changes. And now we get a type FTL. Uh, let's move on to a stats data. This one's pretty good. Uh, you probably... Uh, want to use this one for your graphing if you're keeping an eye on uh, a number of requests. Uh, so here we have, from what I can tell from the limited documentation that I found, and maybe it's just my, my searching wasn't that great, but from what I can decipher from the timestamps, um, these are summaries in 10 minute increments for 24 hours. That's uh, kind of my guess. Uh, and then I have ads over time here, uh, same thing. 10 minute increments. It looks like the Pi Hole uh, backend software just uh, summarizes in 10 minute increments. And again, there's no authentication to get this information as well. And then to get the most recently blocked um, domain, uh, here's incoming.telemetry.mozilla.org was blocked, and you do that by just specifying that URL. Again, no authentication required so far. Now let's move on to uh, get top 10 items list. Now this one does have an authentication requirement. Anything with auth req uh, are the ones that do require authentication, in which case you need to add A-U-T-H equals and then your um, API key. Um, I, again, I'm using the Postman variables over here. Um, so I'm using uh, the, the, the this this Postman um, um, uh, variable reference and uh, it, it works for me because that way I don't have to change it in all the other queries. Now um, I presume uh, that most people know uh, where to get the API but I'm gonna go ahead and show where to get the I API key uh, by going to my Pi-hole um, portal. Okay, mine is running on a little Raspberry Pi Zero this password uh, there you go and all you have to do is go to settings and then API web interface and then show API token 
and then make sure nobody's sh shoulder surfing you and hit show token and basically uh, this will take about five to ten seconds on my device at least and it's going to generate a qr code which we don't really care about at this moment but this is what we need right here so we copy this and what in my postman environment i would go over here and and just post it for my pi hole key variable and what that does is now uh, populates here in every request that has pi hole key so i'm gonna go ahead and send this request and that gets the top 10 items list not when these domains were requested but just the, the top uh, top 10 domains now I could just change this value right here and make it the top say 15 and I would get the top 15 and so on so uh, go ahead and, uh, and and have fun with that uh, piece of code uh, talking of uh, speaking of code let's take a look at what this code looks like and here you have a Python request uh, I'm, I'm importing a request the request library um, to pointing my URL um, this is populating the actual IP because it's no longer Postman, it's that Python code. And as you can see here, the query string contains top items and the numbers right there, which obviously you can just change to whatever you want. This has to be your API key for your pie hole. Uh, this is completely unnecessary. And uh, there you have it. There's a Python code uh, kind of explaining um, how uh, to make this particular request. Now, if you have a friend, colleague, coworker um, that is working on a different language uh, this is the, the, this is one of the features of Postman that I like very much is that uh, I can go in here and just switch the language and I can provide my friend my colleague uh, the sample code so they can get up and running uh, more quickly okay so let's move on to the next query so we're gonna get the get you're gonna run the get query sources and again requires authentication all right and these are the machines in my environment um, some are actual actual uh, routers. Uh, this one's a PC, uh, and that one's I think is a, a tablet. Uh, and this is of course the uh, pie hole itself. And it just gives you a count of the number of requests that were made. Pretty simple. Uh, in this case, I have a uh, get query sources equals equals 100, but I don't have 100 devices. But it's nice to know that you can uh, uh, change that value. So if you changed it to the top two. Um, you can get the top two and so on. All right, now what if we want all the queries, which would be great if you want to export this information for use elsewhere. Uh, so we can do a get all queries, pass the authentication uh, token, and you get the time that the request was made for what um, address by whom. All right, so let's go, go to another example like this one. Um, this device made a call to iCloud. Um, this device made a call to Akamai Edge. Um, this device made a call to private internet access and so on. And uh, yeah, so kind of th this one jives, uh, syncs up with what the pie hole has in the logs. Okay, so let's go on to the next one, uh, get top 100 queries. And the difference between this one and the previous one, I mean, it, uh, they, they look basically identical, except that this one s s just says get all queries and this one has an equal. So you have an equal to, uh, we can easily change that to equal five and just get the five queries. That's it. Um, so get the top queries. Uh, let's move on to get forwarding destinations. So when the requests are made, what, what forwarding DNS destinations are used? And there you have it. And the uh, kind of the distribution of those requests of where the, the requests are being forwarded to looks like in my environment most of them are going to 1.001 okay let's go over to get count of query types so in your environment um, what kind of queries are being are they MX record queries are they pointer records um, so it looks like in my environment they're mostly a records which uh, is normal and this is probably uh, uh, my Windows 10 box that I haven't turned that um, IPv6 off on, but there you go. And then lastly, a nice little feature um, to have a, 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 you know, at your disposal if you want to have a little script uh, to turn the blocking on and off. If you want to have a very strict uh, blocking and then maybe um, have it so that you can turn it off uh, with a custom web app or a custom app 
that or some kind of filtering that uh, enab enables or disables based on time. It'd be nice. You can uh, programmatically create it. So here we have the enable command and we'll pass the token and because it's already enabled i'm not going to run that one first let's go ahead and disable it so we'll hit uh send on disable there you have it and so that got the status disabled and now we'll go to enable and click that and status enabled so you can enable and disable blocking on your pi hole uh, for whatever reason, testing purposes, maybe you're you're having issues with your connectivity, you can temporarily disable it, see if that's the issue, um, or just to um, allow free access at, uh, at certain times. And uh, we can go on to do a little Python demo here. Uh, we'll take this particular um, request. Let's go with actually disable. Uh, we're gonna go go to code, and I'm gonna go to Python. I'm gonna copy this code out. And I'm going to actually use Notepad++ just because if I paste the code directly into the command line um, Python uh, interpreter, it, 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 it sometimes messes up the, uh, the indentations and the carriage return. So I put it into Notepad first. That cleans it up. And then I'll go into command.exe. Uh, I'll type Python. And actually, there's one more thing. I'm not using... A, uh, any um, certificates here? Uh, the back end is not is using uh, no certificate. If you were using an HTTPS system, sorry. Um, if this was HTTPS, um, you would do verify equals false. But in uh, this case, uh, we don't need that. Um, sorry, I'm just used to doing that in all of my other demos when I'm using HTTPS. So we'll hit that. Now, if this worked. Then when I hit enter on printing out the response, I should get the same JSON response content that I received over here. So status disabled, and there you have it. Now, if I change um, this query here, so the query string, I should be able to change that to enable. All right, and then I'll rerun the request and if I ask for the response to be printed out again there it is then I should get the status enabled so uh, it's working beautifully we can take this code save it uh, on another system and just have it ready to go to be called by some other uh, software so that's it uh, this is my quick intro to Python uh, sorry Pi-hole API uh, with a Python example, and uh, I hope you enjoy uh, using Pyhole. If you like this video, hit that like button. Please subscribe. Uh, I'd love to see more people uh, learning from my videos. And uh, leave some comments. and Let me know what you think, or if you have some suggestions on other cybersecurity products you would like to see on, on this cybersecurity API series. My name is Ethan Ortiz, and I'll see you next time.